I've been looking in the app store lately for some game engines I can use to make games and I've come up with three of them ex with an extra one out there which I feel like is very suitable and very great to showcase to you guys and I just want to showcase these ones so the three game engines I'm talking about is Codia, Hyperfan and GDevelop. There is an extra one I'll put at the end of the video if you're interested in a free one that's very cool but these game engines in my opinion very great for making games and that they're more game focused there were other apps i was considering like swift and i think pi t-shirt i don't really know there was one other one that was for python i was considering but i didn't really see them as game engines more of just apps that could make games but these ones are like more geared towards games so if you are interested you should, we're gonna in this video we're just gonna try to compare these three engines show their advantages disadvantages and see which one's best for you and this isn't a law like you just have to follow this game engine or that a game engine but no this is just so that you can compare and see what your options are out there so hopefully we watch this video and let's go straight to the video the first app we want to talk about is Codia. Codia was made by two lives left in 2011 and it uses Lua as a scripting language it can run both 2d and 3d games making it great for game development on the ipad the first advantage of Codia is that it uses Lua. Lua is a powerful but simple language. It is great for very simple works, but is also very detailed that even advanced users want to play along with. Codia's use of Lua really does elevate the app because it makes it such that beginners can enjoy it because it's so simple, yet complicated and more advanced users can also enjoy it because of how detailed the language is. The second advantage of Codia is that it's very affordable. At a price of $15, it's not so much that it will break the bank, but it's also very much worth it because there are so many features that even when you use the app, you feel like you're underpaying because of how much you can do with the app. I've actually used the app before, and when I first saw it six months ago, I thought the price was probably a little too steep because I didn't really know how the app would be like. But after I've tried it, I've seen that it's actually kind of worth it because the amount of features you get with that small price tag, it's like you're almost robbing the developers of the money. That's how much I feel about how affordable it's pretty is. And I don't feel like it should be so much of a hindrance on you because you just want something free. But you should also consider that the devs also need some money. So I think the $15 price tag is very affordable for both the user and it's nice that the devs can also get money to support themselves. The third and my personal favorite advantage of Codia is that it has so many features. Features like shaders, scene management, mashes, physics, objective C, lights, Xcode support, basically meaning that you can export your game to the app store. Shade, an app created by Two Life Left, is very integrated with Codia. So basically if you create a shader in Shade, it can be used in Codia, which is very great advantage of Codia. And another thing is that it uses air code. Air code is basically that you can write code in Visual Studios on your laptop and it will synchronize with your iPad. Basically, you can type the code in your iPad and when you update it on Visual Studio code, it now updates on your iPad, making live editing and it's a very useful features if you want to do quick or if you just want to step back from your iPad and just use your computer, it's a very nice way of using uh, the f features of Visual Studios and allowing you to make your code on your computer and one other thing i love is that it has a lot of inputs inputs such as keyboard touch gamepad i even made a custom mouse support so but it's not really official the devs are trying to create a more official way of doing it but these are one of the like advantages of codia which is very great the fourth and in my opinion the most overlooked advantage of codia is that it has constant app support so you don't have to worry if the app is going to die because you see updates every month so you know that it's living and things are going well and if you go to the discord which is the fifth advantage they have a very good community which is a discord and a forum and if you go there and ask the devs to make like add features they're very welcome and they really accept ideas very easily which is an advantage i love to take advantage of and i love about it because it, the devs are like very personal and you can ask them for new features because they're very open-minded and that's one thing i love about the codia it's just, just the community the community is so polite so good 
because many communities out there they're just very toxic but this community is very polite they take they they understand they're patient they can willing to teach people and that's just another thing community is also another advantage that you should not overlook because a good community can give you great motivation the final main advantage of Codia is that it has a repo. The repo is basically a place where you can put your Codia apps so others can play and experiment with them. It's just a nice community made system, almost like the app store, where you can just download apps into Codia and just have fun and play along with it. Now that we have talked about the advantages of Codia, it's also important to talk about the disadvantages. One of them is that there's a lack of tutorials, especially for the modern side of Codia. It, they have so many features, but there's not many tutorials to teach how to use the features. There is a place where they keep all the code where you can look at the transcripts and tutorials there, but it's not really that up to date with all the new features. And so it's just, there needs to be more tutorials so that people can, new people can understand how to use the app. And one other thing I really don't like is that it's just so many crashes at some time, especially with the recent version. The old legacy version, which is the more stable version, they don't really have that many crashes, so it's not really that much to worry. But with the modern version, there can be quite a lot of crashes, but the good thing about these crashes is they don't lose your progress. It's just that it just closes out and you can just reopen and you just continue on your way. It's not like every day there is a crash. It's just that in specific sections there are crashes. And one other thing, which in my opinion is not that much of a disadvantage, but to others it might be a deal breaker, is that there's actually no editor. It's just all text-based. But one thing I love is that they have a UI system which you can use to make your own editors, which I like to take advantage of because I am a more of cold person. So I don't really like to have editors there. If I did, I would probably use something like Unity or Unreal or something like that. But I just like to type and just see my code out there. But to other people, they just don't like that. And they want to have an editor where they can see all the assets and entities and just have a feel of where their game world is going to be. So there's no editor there, which might be a deal breaker for some people. Now that we've talked about Codia, now we're going to move over to Hyperpad. Hyperpad, in my opinion, is very easy. It uses visual coding, which is very great for kids. And it can be used for, for anybody who just loves to see how their code is written, which is very good. One other thing I love about Hyperpad is that it has a very slick and nice design editor. The editor is well made for touch. And I just love how everything is just well organized, things to the side, assets down below, the properties to the right side, and other things in other areas, which is so easy that even kids can understand, adults can understand, and the editor is just so great. And because of an editor, you can just drag and drop where you want your scene. You can place your scene however you want. You can make it as a platformer, you can make it as anything that you have in your mind and you can just visualize it right in that editor which is a very neat and nice thing one other thing i love about hyperpad is that it's very affordable at 15 dollars it's pretty cheap in my opinion and one thing i just see that the people on youtube of the hyperpad community is that they usually just try to ask why is it not free but in my opinion why should it be free how can the devs get money if it's free so you just have to consider you're not the only one that needs to make money out of this and money is involved the devs worked hard to make the app so i think it's very fair enough to just pay the 15 dollars and in my opinion it's not too much to ask so hyperpad actually has a lot of features it has multiplayer keyboard mouse support it supports touch as you would think it also has ads which is very cool in my opinion because not codia doesn't really support ads but it's very nice that you can just make money just right in that app and not just have to export it and talking about exporting, you can export the Xcode, meaning that you can just go and put it in the App Store and create money out of your games. One thing I love about Hyperpad is that it just has a very nice and funny Discord. I just love the community of that place. It's just, it's so lively. Well, Codia is more of a mature type of Discord. Hyperpad is just like a more, I would say, not immature, but like fun place to be around. Where you just see a lot of people with personality in that place. And another thing I love about Hyperpad is just the tutorials. Yeah, some might consider the tutorials to be a little, I don't know, child focused because like the way it's made and, but in my opinion, it's just, it's very great that they know their audience and they're trying to tailor their tutorials to make it very fun and engaging for people, which is a very good thing in my opinion. 
The final thing I really love about Cutterpad is that they have a hub and apparently they updated it recently to make it look nicer and cool. And just the thing I love about the hub compared to the repo of Codia, Codia has a repo as I said before, but the hub in my opinion is just more superior. You can have likes, you can have good accounts, you can save all your stuff, you can play games right in the hub, unlike in Codia where you have to download it and then play it. But in this one, you can just play it straight from the hub, which is a nice and fun place. It's just, it builds a sense of community where people can just play and just make great apps because likes and engagements motivate people to create more creator and nicer apps. So I just love it because it's pretty fun. And it's just, if you just want to have a nice place to play games, you can just go to the hub and just see a bunch of cool and fun games to play. Now that we've talked about the advantages of Hyperpad, it's time to go to the disadvantages. And the first disadvantage is that it's a scripting language, which might not be that bad for people who love visual scripting, but for me who loves typing, I see it as a turn back. And the other one is that it's not that complex. I think it's mainly due to the scripting language. What I mean is that it's not complex. It's not that you can't do a lot of features. It's that it's hard to make more complex systems like pathfinding, and it doesn't really have shaders and all these type of stuff that you want, like functions aren't there. I believe that one of the devs did showcase that functions is coming very soon, but I haven't seen it there. So it's not really that complex, which in my opinion, really throws me away because I like to have more freedom like shaders and dabble into more complex type of stuff. But I think it's also simplicity is what they're looking for also, which, but it, what I mean by it's not complex, it doesn't mean that you can't make like complex systems. Multiplayer is still there and all these, as I said before, but just being able to create your own com complex systems is just a throwback for me because it's not really that easy to make complex systems in that app. The last disadvantage in my opinion is that it's more kids focused. If you're a professional, you will kind of notice it seems to be more geared towards kids. The tutorials are more geared towards kids and everything else is more geared towards kids. It's not like adults can't use it. You know, those complex systems like multiplayer, you know, not every like a six year old can learn all those stuff, but the tutorials and all these stuff are more geared towards kids, which makes it fun and very engaging. But if that's not really what you want, if you want a more mature type of community like that you don't want to have these type of like loud noises that you know the tutorials have i don't think it would be the best since it is more geared towards kids which is very great in my opinion in the context of kids but when it comes to like mature adults i don't think it would be the greatest but don't throw it back the apps is still great and adults i think can use it very well so don't make that disadvantage just make you run away. I just wanted to make you know that before you just go there and you're surprised that it's more younger based. The final app we'll be talking about is GDevelop. GDevelop is a very easy app to use in my opinion. I was able to make a game in it and just, like, I just watched one tutorial and I was able to make a nice, fun, simple game in just a matter of minutes, honestly. Well, I do have experience in programming, but if that, usually Lua took me about, about two to three days to create but this one took me about an hour to just learn how to use it and the editor is so good and clean you know Cody doesn't have an editor Hyperbed does have an editor but this one in my opinion is more focused and more more complex which is kind of cool and nice and they have a lot they support a lot of platforms you know, iOS, Android, all these platforms. I don't think Hyperpad supports other platforms other than iPad. I, I think they're trying to go to Mac. Codia supports iPhone and they're trying to move to Mac too. But this one supports a wider, the PC market. And even you can use your PC to create these games, which is a very cool thing. Talking about simplicity, they have a lot of presets. So you don't actually have to like learn how to create like more complex systems like a top-down preset where you can basically just upload that to your character and you'll be able to have top-down running, top-down walking, and you could also have a platformer, you can have racing components, and it just makes it very beginner-friendly and very nice to use in my opinion. They also have a lot of tutorials, both in the app and a lot of tutorials in YouTube, but in my opinion, like the one in the app is very cool because it's like a nice guided way of making tutorials. I think Hyperpad has one of those, but this one has a better type of in-app tutorial. And this app tutorials in YouTube is much nice and clean. They're more professional. Like this video isn't really that professional, but their one has a more professional type of voice, which is a very cool thing to have. Now that we've talked about the advantages, 
we got to go to the disadvantages, and oh boy, in my opinion, there's quite a lot of them. Well, in my opinion, it's very unaffordable. It's like a very high subscription per year. I think over $200 a year. And the thing that's just so annoying is that they have so much pop-ups to pay. You don't even know what's free because I fought a system. I think this character I was trying to use, I thought it was free because I didn't have any coins. But it just does, it was not free because you just have to have a pop-up keep coming up and saying, pay for the subscription, pay for the subscription, which is very annoying in my opinion. I understand that they need money, but I just don't like that the subscription is quite high and I just don't like subscriptions. I'd prefer to just pay outright. And talking about coins, the coin system, you just have to pay to have coins and you can use the coins to make have assets and all these cool stuff. But I feel like... It's just quite a lot of money in my opinion to have coins. Just keep paying to have coins. I just really don't know. That is my opinion. I know that the game engine on the PC version is, I think it's free. Like the PC version might be free, but if the iPad version costs a subscription, I just can't recommend it since I just don't like paying subscriptions. Maybe you do. You Maybe you want to pay $200 a year, but as for me, I just don't want to. Another disadvantage of Gear Valve is that it's just not you can't really make complex systems out there. They have like presets, like top-down racing, all these type of cool stuff, and which is nice and all, but the, if you want to make more complex systems, it's going to be pretty difficult to, to be like, try and challenge the engine to make more difficult stuff because it's presetted for like their way of doing it because they want to make it easy for beginners, which is great for beginners, but for people who want to go more deep, it's kind of hard to. Maybe there are people that make very high end stuff and you know a lot of complex systems out there, but for your av but it's not really easy to do that because you just have the battle with the engine. So I think that might be a disadvantage for people who just want to make more complex type of systems. Before I go and compare the three engines, Codia, G Develop, and Hyperpad, I do want to mention that I found another engine. I wouldn't say an engine, but more like a framework turned into an app on the App Store called Love 2D Studios. I won't really make advantages and disadvantages because I haven't used it, but I would like to say that it, it seems very cool because I've run a bunch of Love 2D projects there and it's very nice that it runs very pretty smoothly. Though it does seem like older Love 2D projects don't really work that well. It's more like the newer version. So, and there is a little bit of bugs, but it's a new app I saw and I just probably make a little shout out so you can, if you want to check the app out, it might be fun. Okay, so now that you've seen all these apps, it's now time to compare them. So in my opinion, if I'm to choose which one is my favorite, I would consider Kodia. Since I am Kodia Dev, you can consider that to be biased, but I like it because of how complex it's simple it can be. But if you really like want a visual type of thing, you should try Hyperpad because Hyperpad's in visual type of way is just very advanced yet very simple and I like it. And G-Develop, I don't really know about G-Develop because it's just I don't like the subscriptions, but you, someone might like it and the PC version's out there, but if I'm trying to rate App Store, like apps, Apple game engines, and if the Apple version, the iPad one, is just not good, I don't know how I can just recommend it, but if you like it and you love G-Develop and you're willing to spend that much money, you should try it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and this gives you an understanding on like what game engines are out there. So you don't just say, oh, like, what can I do with my iPad? I can, you know, you can make games out there and whatever is more suitable for you, try it out loud. This is not a law to say, oh, Kodi is the best. Oh, Hyperpad is the best. Oh, G Developer is great. Or oh, this app is stupid or that app is stupid. But just so that you can know this exists and what's the pros and cons towards it. So it's the choice is up to you and you choose what you want to do with it, this information. So. Have a nice day and hopefully you subscribe and you know click the like button and hit the notification bell and have a nice day.